Welcome back to the Albuquerque Maine Public Library. Once again, this is Thea Haver with Modern Albuquerque. And here we are at the threshold of the Albuquerque Maine Public Library's lower level. Now remember, this is not a basement, specifically because it has four exterior courtyards. We're just gonna take a quick look over to our left. We're gonna see the two things that we've been avoiding through our live stream event, which were of course these elevators. We didn't wanna drop our live stream. So we didn't take these elevators, instead we used the staircases. But as we saw in that partially recessed alcove in our first video, there's some detail work in the brick above the frame of the elevator, pretty cool. And again, we're gonna notice these wooden carved door handles. Now, I don't actually know what material was used to make these doors. I don't believe it's cottonwood, unlike the vertical paneling, because cottonwood is a very soft wood, and I don't think it would be hard enough or secure enough for doorways, even interior doorways. But we are going to see more of that cottonwood as we round the corner here. There it is. These long vertical panels. Now, some of the cottonwood in the building has been painted white over the years. We didn't go into the conference room, but that conference room does have the same wood paneling that is also painted white. Now, as I point the camera down this hallway, I'm just gonna let you know that there used to be a, an area behind this little room that we're gonna explore in just a moment that wrapped around that building. But as part of the 2006 update to the building, that was closed off. Now, most of those 2006 updates done by the firm of Cherry C were to bring the building up to contemporary code standards. You'll notice we haven't gone into any of the restrooms in the building, that's not because we don't wanna go inside. It's simply because they have been renovated over the years and don't look like what they would have looked like in 1975 when the library opened. So here is the 209 seat auditorium. We're gonna head inside and take a look around. You're gonna hear my sound change a little bit. Because of course, as an auditorium, it was designed with speakers in mind. Not just loudspeakers, but actual human speakers. Now these 209 seats were designed by Haywood Wakefield and the upholstery is custom. We're gonna talk about that as we get to an area with a little bit better light. And underneath of them, we do have some remnants of that original brown, sandy colored carpet. Now we're starting to get into some light where we can see the textiles that we're looking at. Now last year, Modern Albuquerque worked with Basement Films and the Albuquerque Historical Society as well as Historic Albuquerque Incorporated to host an event in this space. And while we were setting up, I started to look at this textile, this upholstery fabric, very closely. And I noticed something. If you look at it, while it appears to be this kind of purple melange, the individual fibers are blue and red. However, we back up, that combination gives the impression of purple. Now, I had remembered seeing a fabric like this on a Herman Miller LaFonda chair probably on eBay. And that textile had been attributed to designer Alexander Girard. Now, if you watched our first video, you already know what's coming. We did reach out to Dr. Deborah Kosky, who's also associated with Docomomo, Michigan. She's an art historian and a scholar of Girard's work. And we wanted to know if she had any opinion as to whether or not this fabric was among the textiles that Gerard created as the director of the fabric division for Herman Miller. Now, Gerard was both an architect and a designer. He lived in Santa Fe. And we thought back to Robert Campbell's comments about New Mexican materials. And wouldn't it be cool if Alexander Gerard did design this fabric and he designed it while he lived in Santa Fe? Well, it was Dr. Kowski's opinion, as well as the opinion of several of her colleagues who were generous enough to provide their own insights, that this is 
Alexander Gerard fabric. Now we do not have the documentation to back that up, but it's in pretty incredible to find these custom upholstered seats here at the Albuquerque Maine Public Library. And what a beautiful color scheme it is. We've talked a lot about color and the warmth of the desert light that is echoed in the selections of the interior fittings in that 1975 opening design. We definitely see that reiterated here in the auditorium with these warm pink metal seats designed by Haywood Wakefield and this purple melange fabric that almost looks like the New Mexican sky or even the color that the light casts on the Sandia Mountains right at sunset, that sort of watermelon color. And this has aged incredibly well, very durable fabric. This space is used for events. Obviously, modern Albuquerque has made use of this space. Albuquerque residents can actually reserve this space for free events on the Albuquerque Bernalillo County Public Library website. I'm not sure that with, with the pandemic, unfortunately, I don't think we're having any live events right now. But this space is available for community use, which we think is really incredible. As I mentioned earlier, there are 209 seats here. And one of the things that I really like about the library is the thoughtfulness of things like, oh, I don't know, electrical needs. When I was down here last year looking for ways to run the equipment that we brought with us, we needed electricity and remembering just how thoughtful George Pearl was in his plan for a flexible space that met the library's needs, I knew we could look up and find some electrical outlets and also look to the walls and find the power that we needed. Pretty thoughtful. We're gonna do one last little circuit here inside of the auditorium to let you take in just how beautiful and lush these textiles are and how surprising it is to find them in such great shape and with such interesting provenance here at the Albuquerque Maine Public Library. This space exits into a community room space. We're gonna take these stairs and go up into that community room space, which has alternately been a lobby for events that have taken place at the library, a gallery or exhibition space, a reception area. You're gonna notice a change in the sound here because we're leaving carpet and now we have vinyl flooring. So most of the public spaces do have carpet to help baffle the sound. This space does have hard surfaces so our audio is going to be a little weird. Right now this space is in use by the friends of the library system who are sorting books for sale. We're gonna get our first look at this level of one of the exterior courtyards. As I mentioned when we were exploring outside in our first video in our live stream, there are four exterior courtyards. Three of them are open to the public for reading spaces and one is used by the library for deliveries, I believe. Now outside in this space, unfortunately it's been recently taken over by some electronic equipment these are in use with the photovoltaic panels that are up on the roof level. But once again, we see our integrated ceiling system, which could allow for any temporary walls to be installed in this room to create smaller spaces, but right now it's certainly open. We're going to get another good look at another original water fountain, just like the one we saw on the upper floor. 
same detail in the brick above. And take a look at the scale of these doors. Here we don't even have a transom panel. The, the door itself goes all the way from floor to ceiling. Now in the National Register nomination for the structure, this paneling was not identified as cottonwood. In fact, it was only referred to as just a hardwood paneling. We actually don't see the cottonwood described in even the plans for the building. It was only through a conversation with Robert Campbell that we were able to find out that that was the wood used on that part of the project. Now, as we begin to exit this space, we're going to explore the children's area of the library. Now, we just talked to the library director and he confirmed that right now the library houses 126,000 volumes. So certainly not the half a million number projected by the library's team of Alan Clark and Don Reichman back in the early 1970s. Now, planning for this project actually did begin in 1971, the idea for the library, and its need was established in 1970. Now, this new main library was replacing a library along Central Avenue, which had been done in the Spanish Pueblo revival style. Now, there actually was some contention when it was declared by Pearl that he would not be using that traditional New Mexican architectural style. As I mentioned in the previous video, he didn't want to falsify those forms by imitating them. So while it is what he considered to be a New Mexican building, it did not look like the revival style structures that had been used previously as the main library. Now here instead we see a story pit. We're gonna go inside even though this is somewhat of a storage area right now. Now this particular space was differentiated from the main space by the color of its original carpet. Originally, we had almost a burnt orange or a red color carpet in here. Obviously, it's been replaced over the years. And the concrete in here, rather than leaving it raw, is colored. Beautiful and certainly glowing warm yellow, almost verging on orange. There's some furniture in here that we have been able to identify, but this sofa is not one of those pieces. So if you'd like to help us out in the comments below, if you know who designed this sofa, if you know anything about it, go ahead and comment below and let us know. We're gonna take a look at this space next. This is currently in use as a puppet theater. In fact, photos that date to 1975 show that this is mostly a puppet theater. Actually, there might be some little bit of Gerard inspiration in the, in the painting or that surrounds it. But there is something cool about this that I'm pretty sure most of us don't know. We're gonna go inside the storage room and take a look. Up behind it, we have a projector screen. So we think this might have been a little rear projection room that could have been used for showcasing some educational programming to the kids that happen to visit the Albuquerque Main Public Library. And again, we have this absolutely massive door that reaches up to the ceiling. Now you'll notice in here, the ceiling is different. We do not have that modular grid we do instead have these tiles, which we see in a lot of 1970s buildings, and they do have some acoustical components here in helping to baffle some of the sound. And looking down right in front of us, we see some knoll slingback chairs. Now these metal frame chairs are original to the building. They do show up in some of the promotional materials and photos that were taken by SMPC architects when the building opened. However, they were at the time upholstered in orange, 
Obviously that upholstery has been redone over the years. One more look at this little alcove that has been in use for puppets. And we'll go ahead and we're gonna exit our storytelling space. Now these doors didn't used to be clear and transparent. These are a new addition to the library. They were changed out obviously for safety reasons over the years. So you can see inside what's happening inside the children's story time area at all times. As we pan around, we're gonna notice an art installation on the ceiling. Let's go ahead and take a close look at this. Obviously, this is a new addition to the building. It hasn't been here since 75, but it was designed by artist Stephanie Lerma. And I believe it's made of wax paper. I'm gonna take a close look up and under this incredible and whimsical artist work. As we pan the camera down, you can see there's more glass and we're looking out onto one of those lower level courtyards that we looked at from above in our first video. And something else you're gonna notice, there are still some tracks left on the ceiling from curtains that used to hang in this space. Now, unfortunately, we don't know what those curtains looked like. They may have been similar to some of the textiles that we saw in the staff lounge. We're gonna take one last look around the children's area. And again, you're gonna see the configurable panels locking in to the ceiling grid. Right over here, creating a small office bump out into the main space. Now, Pearl and his team decided to house lesser used collections on this level and that it didn't include the children's collection. Originally on the upper level was an entire space dedicated to works about the Southwest. There have been some changes made to the structure. The wall that we see here used to span the entire width of this area, but has been since opened up. We're gonna take a quick look outside and check out one of these courtyard spaces. And as we exit through these doors, again, we're gonna see the use of this carved wooden handles. Not only are they used on in the interior of the building, they're used on the exterior as well. It's a little worn and weathered, but it is original. And here we are. Now the landscaping was not finished when the building opened in 1975. However, it has certainly been updated throughout the years to how it appears today. Now this kind of quiet respite away from the bustling city above, is something that Campbell considered a vest pocket park. Not only did having these little open courtyards allow the architects to get away with not having to install a sprinkler system at this lower level, it allowed the public to have a space where they could come out and read and relax and enjoy themselves. And not only the public, but let's think about the needs of the staff as well. They could get away from their busy day and come down here to enjoy looking up 
at the New Mexican sky. Now there's that area where the grand piano goes, as George Pearl likes to joke. That is the cantilevered projection outside of the staff area that we explored earlier. We're gonna see some railing in place here. But just beyond that, there is some glass allowing natural light inside, but you'll notice, of course, that that light that can reach it is pretty limited because of the overhang of the upper level. And again, we've got this raw concrete that was all cast in place. So we go back to that regional sensibility about this building. This was something that we started talking about in our last, in our last video. And these parks were another one of the ideas of bringing traditional New Mexican architecture and design into this very modern library building. Well, I think we're running out of time. We are so glad that you joined us here today at the Albuquerque Maine Public Library. If you haven't already seen it, please go back and watch our live stream where we explore the main level, the upper level, including some cool behind the scenes spaces, as well as the exterior. Thanks for joining us, and we hope you come to visit us again at www.modernabq.org.